Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this session. Uh, those probably joining their first session for the day, we welcome you all. Uh, this session is on uh, mapping heritage in Ireland, a journey by Anne Caroline Distel. I'm Sharon Omoja, joining from Nairobi, Kenya. If you have questions for the speaker, please remember to re leave your questions on the question section. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anna. And I want to talk to you about my journey of mapping heritage in Ireland. I was born in East Germany, also known as the GDR, and I have a keen interest in history and playing music. I moved to Ireland in December 2016 and shortly after became a member of the Kilkenny Archaeological Society and started mapping heritage features right away. I became a member of OpenStreetMap Ireland in spring 2020. Um, when I map heritage, I usually map features like graveyards, castles, ring forts, uh, and so on from a satellite view before visiting a site. Uh, the reason being that I usually went there in the beginning and looked it up on OpenStreetMap afterwards and couldn't find it, so it wasn't mapped. So that's really how I got started. And I still do that. I look it up before I go to a site and see if it is mapped and um, add a few things that I can see on satellite view. And then I visit the site, take pictures and so on, the regular stuff you do. And then add features like inscriptions of plaques and so on. Wherever possible or whenever possible, I used OpenStreetMap or UMAP in projects with the Archaeological Society. So for example, they had a graveyard digitization project where they digitized, um, well, I digitized um, handwritten and typed graveyard records, transcripts of gravestones which they had by the graveyard and I made sure that all the graveyards in the county Kilkenny where I live are mapped if people come here to look for their ancestors graves that they can find the graveyards and then I also created a U map with all the graveyards that we had records for and linked them and that's the map you can see there then in 2019, I started collecting field names. Field names were used by farmers before the age of mobile phones and GPS to give a location for their neighbors. If they were expecting a neighbor to help them in their field, they had to tell them which field they were working in or if their wives were bringing them food or drinks during the day or send the children, they would have to tell them which field they were working in and they had to give them some sort of direction. So um, they all the fields in Ireland used to have names and a lot of them still do. And some of them go back to the Middle Ages, some are not as old, a lot of them aren't as old. And they contain information about the crops grown in them, for example, the rye field or the flax field. And you can have information about geological characteristics like the stony field, for example, or the ownership, like Purcell's field, usually when it's bought from a farmer or it has been bought uh, from a different farmer um, in time gone by, it's still remembered because the name of the, the family name is still in the field name, like Purcell's field, for example, or historical structures that are not visible to the naked eye anymore. For example, the chapel field or the castle field or the kiln field, if there was a lime kiln in the field. And sometimes it's not exactly the field that this historical structure is in, but the field leading up to the structure. So that can be a bit confusing when you only have the name to go by and you're looking for the historical structure. And some of the names are also still in the Irish language in Ireland. And the, the farmers know the names in Irish, but they often don't know what it means because they don't speak Irish enough or they don't know etymology enough to be able to tell you what the meaning of the field name is. Um, so in the beginning, I went with a friend from the Archaeological Society with my laptop, went from farmhouse to farmhouse, and she introduced me to the farmers, which was very important because it uh, establishes a kind of a trust, which is very important for them because they are parting with personal information in their mind. Um, and it is very important to have that uh, sort of trust established. So we went from farmhouse to farmhouse. I had my laptop. I added the names to OpenStreetMap directly. And sometimes if there was a little background story, I could add that in the description as well. 
and then uploaded the information and I could show the farmers immediately what it looked like on OpenStreetMap. And I usually gave them a sticker as well. And the Kilkenny County Council and other councils have collected field names as well, but they're not using OpenStreetMap, um, but they, they prefer to use um, copyrighted maps that I have to pay for. And um, it can take, because it's not as accessible as OpenStreetMap, it can take weeks or sometimes even years until the information they got from the farmers is put onto the map. And then the map might not be accessible um, for a while, like the one we have in Kilkenny hasn't been accessible since last October because there's been work done on the website. Um, but the ones we collected on OpenStreetMap have been available all the time. And these are some of the field names that I collected with that friend. So you see some of them are not very historical, like the first middle field and the second middle field. That happens a lot when farms are sold and the information about the field names is lost with the sale or was lost before. And then they're just numbered, basically. So there's there's a lot of information lost already. And that's why it is very important that we collect them now as soon as possible before it's too late. So, for example, we have the Ban Wee here, which is um, means the yellow field. It's it's an Irish name, and the story behind that is that they used to have it used to be full of um, buttercups, so they're yellow flowers. So the field used to be yellow, and during a certain time of the year, and that's how it got its name. And you see here Campion. So at some point in time, a family called Campion owned that field, and you have a Killen field here. So there used to be a lime kiln, I think, here somewhere. These are just some of the examples. And then came COVID, so we couldn't go from house to house anymore visiting people. Um, so I decided to use field papers instead and send those out to neighboring farmers. In the meantime, I had moved out into the country as well um, and asked the farmer where I live first. And he gave me all the names he had, and they happened to be mostly still the same ones that they had in 1816. Uh, and I know that because in the Archaeological Society, we have a map of 1816 of this area and a state map, and they have all the names on them, all the field names. Um, he gave me his field names and then his cousin's own land around here as well. I got all their field names as well. But then when I sent out field papers, I didn't really get anything back because I had that element of trust that was missing because I, nobody had introduced me to these people and it just didn't work. So I was a bit in despair um, and I contacted another uh, member of the Archaeological Society who I thought might have field names because she lives out in the country and she sent her the field papers and she filled them in and sent them back and she was very obliging and very interested. And even before that, I had started um, making videos on YouTube about how to collect field names using field papers because I was trying to reach out to historical societies and it was locked down and I thought this is the perfect time to do this. And I told her about my videos and she watched them and with the help of my videos, she taught herself how to map and she's been collecting field names ever since and she's become very interested um, in the whole affair and she's using field papers she, she's learned how to use field papers and print them out and she has given them to her neighbors and acquaintances and she has collected a lot of field names in her area and these are some of the ones that she has collected and you see for example here the castle field so there was a castle here at some point but it's not mapped because nobody really knows where it is the killen field up here and I found out on an older map that the lime kiln was there. So I have added that. And then you have some Irish names, which I won't try to pronounce because I'm probably going to butcher them. And a kennel field here. So that's an um, indicator that there was a manor house here. And it's Kilfane. So the manor house was Kilfane house. I'm not quite sure where it is now. The school field here, because I think this used to be the school and um, the field behind it was the school field. And we have a pump field here because there was a pump at some point and another kiln field because there was another kiln. Um, they used lime um, to fertilize the ground. So that's why there were so many lime kilns around and 
lime is the naturally occurring rock around this area. And then the the first friend that had gone uh, around with me um, to her neighbors um, started watching the videos as well. And she taught herself how to map and she's been going around with field papers and collecting field names as well. And both of them are female and both of them are over 60. I don't know how much over 60. I didn't want to ask. So they're definitely not your usual mapping demographic, not to start off, you know, I, I'd say it's very rare that people, females, start at the, when they're retired to, to map and to teach themselves something like that. So I was inspired by that, by the success of getting these two uh, women mapping, that I decided to start a YouTube series about, um, with tutorials for historically interested people. Uh, and I did that in January 2021. And we were in our third lockdown in Ireland, and we were only allowed to move within a five kilometer radius. So to keep ourselves busy and sane during that time, I thought this would be a good idea. And even within five kilometers, there's history all over the place in Ireland. So there is plenty to do. And also, um, of course, as you all know, when you map, you know the area that you map really well. And um, you might discover things that you never knew were there. Like the first friend who uh, taught herself mapping first said she's seeing so many more things now. Um, she always says, the more you look, the more you see. Um, and I was hoping to promote OpenStreetMap to a new audience as well. Um, I think it is probably fairly well known with cyclists, let's say, because they, they use them and use OpenStreetMap in their sat navs and planning their journeys and so on. But people in heritage usually don't know a lot about OpenStreetMap. So I, by now I've made about 45 videos, I think. Um, these are some of them. They range um, from just introducing OpenStreetMap and the OpenStreetMap website and the concept of open data and open access which seems to be a very new thing still for a lot of people, to mapping uh, townlands, which was a big project with OpenStreetMap Ireland that you might have heard about, um, and then relatable things like mapping post boxes. A lot of the older post boxes are in Ireland still have the royal cipher on them for the English kings that ruled during the time when the post boxes were put up. There are only three royal ciphers in Ireland because of course, then Ireland got independence and they didn't use royal ciphers anymore. Um, and then field names, of course. And um, I had two interviews, for example, one with the female mapper um, and one with another field name collector from a different county who is a, a male student. And um, I thought that might be interesting for some people to watch or to listen to what their opinion was. For a lot of things that I wanted to map on OpenStreetMap, there weren't any tags or there wasn't, well, they weren't established really. So I created a couple of proposals. I think I have four proposals approved. Um, one was Ohm stones. Can't go into explaining what Ohm stones are now, but um, O-G-H-A-M is how you spell it. Uh, holy wells. There were some holy wells mapped, but not as a place of worship. So that's one of the tags that I established. Um, another one was Mass Rocks, which was only approved recently and we're getting there. And um, really important to explain the concept of open data and open source. As I said before, it's it seems to be a very new concept to a lot of people. They think everything on the internet is open data, which it isn't, certainly not. Um, also, I talk about um, UMAP because I think it's a very good way to introduce people to OpenStreetMap without fearing to vandalize the map accidentally. And then, of course, Overpass Turbo as well to, sh to show people that there's a lot more data on the map that you can't see when you just go to OpenStreetMap.org. And also about field papers to um, enable people to survey during lockdown and after lockdown once that is finally reached. And of course, papillary as well, because that's a very important tool for us. I then also created a Facebook page to be 
in contact with my followers or future followers or people who are interested in this kind of thing because I can't do that on YouTube. And because not everybody has a Gmail account and can subscribe to my channel. And also to enable a debate about the proposed tags within the group. Um, of course, I also use the OpenStreetMap Ireland Telegram chat group for that, but not everybody is on Telegram and not all the mappers or potential mappers that we have in Ireland um, and abroad, people abroad who map in Ireland um, are in our Telegram chat. And also, of course, Facebook is a good tool to share my videos and to have other historical societies share my videos, which has happened a bit. And especially during lockdown, it has gone down a bit now that the country is opening up uh, more and people can travel again uh, beyond their 5k and even beyond their county. But um, it's still being done. And the feedback from long-standing mappers is very good and encouraging. Um, sometimes I do get feedback from new mappers who will report back and share their work or their thoughts and suggest other things for me to do tutorials on or for proposals. And I've also built up a bit of a reputation within the few weeks since January. And I'm now expected to do more videos and, and to do more proposals even though everybody could do that, really. Um, in conclusion, I want to say that I think it is very important for people who don't know about OpenStreetMap, open data and open source to give them concrete examples, rather than talking about abstract ideas like open data and open source when they don't really know. You know, we all know that because we're in that bubble, but a lot of people, as I said, just think, sure, everything is open on the internet. Um, and to be relatable and approachable. So um, find something that people are interested in and that can be mapped, of course. Um, sure, there could be someone doing uh, tutorials on how to map things for cyclists or for people with disabilities or something like that. But I've chosen heritage because that's my thing. And um, so I'm doing videos on that. Um, I think there's still a long way to go to spread the word about OpenStreetMap within the general public in Ireland. Uh, it's probably very different in, in other countries that are much better mapped, like Germany or the US. But I think we're getting there and we just have to stay at it and be persistent and maybe be a bit annoying at times um, within our, our group of friends um, that aren't mappers yet, but we'll get them there. I think. Um, and thank you very much for giving me the chance to talk here and for listening and for switching on or joining me for this talk. Uh, danke vielmals and Gora Mille Ah, uh, yes, thank you. That comes, uh, that's the end of our, of our presentation. Uh, we are trying to get the speaker for the Q&A session. And uh, if she joins the Q&A sessions, we'll be, we'll be live with the Q&A session. But if uh, she won't be able to join, uh, we'll see you in the next session. There are more interesting sessions that have been lined up for you. See you in the next one.